Hey everybody, today I want to show you how to make Photoshop act more like the real thing. So our journey starts with hardness and hardness basically reflects what kind of material it is you're going to be rendering. So the material may be as hard as 100% which is going to be better for metal and rock or as weak as 0% which is better for gas and light, you know, very soft and tangible kinds of uh, materials. Twenty five percent, which is better for, you know, fluid. Fifty percent is better for hair, very fine material, fabric, thin plastic. Seventy five is better for skin, leather, which is the same thing, and hard plastic. So when you're rendering a, a specific kind of material, choose the proper hardness and it will be much faster, much easier. Um, you won't have to get really, really close and go over and over it. Um, with opacity and flow, they both do the same thing. They just have a different way of doing it. Opacity is repetition based. So if I was to get a really basic brush here, um, I'm just right clicking to pull up this menu. And if you open up the brush dynamics menu with this little folder here, you can change uh, transfer and all this other special stuff off. And if I was to um, take opacity down real low, I'll have to lift my brush each time to get that stacking, to get that layering effect. But every time I lift my brush, I add a little bit more value or color or whatever I'm working with. With flow, it's not repetition based. You do not have to lift your brush it's simply how long you spend in a given area. So I could just, I'm not lifting my brush now, I'm just repeatedly going over this back and forth. And in time it'll, you know, if you spend more time in certain areas, it'll get darker. The last thing to change about your brush is the shape of it. And I have some real basic shapes here just to kind of give you a sense of what kind of shapes you might look for. We have abstract shapes, we have point shapes, and we have line shapes, and finally chunky shapes. If we were to select one of these brush shapes here and then go up to edit and define brush preset, it'll give us a chance to name it, it'll tell us how big it is in terms of the pixels. and. Um, Right out of the gate, this is just going to work like a stamp. If I select this brush and just lay it down, it's going to stack, right? And I can change opacity and flow to make it stack however I want it to. If I want it to be repetition based, if I want it to be flow based, time based. So beyond this, we can actually uh, make this a lot more useful by making it dynamic. To do that, open the brush folder again, we get this option here. Um, let's go down to transfer and let's go to shape dynamics. And by default, this should have our pen pressure controlling the size and the opacity and flow. Um, again, if you were to change these to be off for certain things, it's going to change the way the brush will react. And if I start off with a really light touch and progressively get harder and harder, it's going to give it the appearance that it's coming to, toward you in space. So this is a huge time saver. I mean, this is really useful. But you'll notice that it works best when it's very low opacity and low flow. And as it gets more, you know, towards the front here, it's too solid to pick out those different details. So to overcome this obstacle, you can go to color dynamics and you can change the brightness jitter. So if I do this now, you'll just kind of see basically what this has done. And it's going to make a more unique spread for the color. You don't have to go through and change your color each time and go through, change your color and go through, you can just do it in one stroke. 